So Connor and I have been using the EOS R5 and the EOS R6 now for a couple of weeks. In fact, we did a cinematic test a couple of days ago. If you guys have not seen those videos, I'll highly recommend you check them out. All of the behind the scenes footage was shot using the EOS R6. And in this video, what we wanna do is focus a little bit more on the R6 and also talk about the major differences between the EOS R5 and the EOS R6. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Hey howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here, and as Armando mentioned, we are talking about the differences between the EOS R5 and the EOS R6, which I actually have been shooting on for quite a while now. Let's go ahead and start with the body differences between the two cameras. More or less, they're identical in terms of shape. They're both a little chunkier than the EOS R, but there are some differences between the two. The first and most major difference is going to be the top dial that you get on the EOS R6. This is the mode dial, so I'm able to switch from video mode to photo mode to portrait mode to automatic mode, all by just twisting the top dial. Whereas on the EOS R5, it takes the old R approach where there is a mode button that you have to press, then you can switch into your photo modes, then you gotta hit info, and then you gotta switch between your video modes. Personally for me, I actually prefer how the R6 is using this dial versus the older style on the EOS R5. So that's the first major difference. The other major difference between the two is that the touch flip display on the R6 is slightly smaller than the R5, and they both have a little forehead on the top when the screen is turned on. It's more noticeable on the R6, but I think that the forehead is relatively the same size on both. Another major difference that you're gonna be getting between the 6 and the 5 is the top-down screen that, that is not present here on the EOS R6, but is present on the R5. This is a really cool thing that I wish this camera got. I understand why they didn't do it because this is a cheaper camera. The R5 is definitely more expensive, but it's where you could see all your information that you would wanna see, i.e. your aperture, your shutter speed, what mode you're in, such and such like that. And the last major difference between the two bodies is going to be the media that it is able to take. So on the R6, you get two standard SD card slots, which is nice, we like dual card slots. But on the EOS R5, you are going to be getting a CFAS Express Type B, which is a really, really fast, chunky, durable card. It's the same card that you're gonna get in the C500, and you don't get that in the R6. So a little bit of a bummer, but it makes sense why this is the case. Now the glaring differences between the R5 and the R6 is going to come down to the sensor size. 45 megapixels on the R5, which is amazing. Literally five megapixels away from it to be considered a medium format camera like the Hasselblad. Now on the R6, you're gonna get 20 megapixels. It's nothing to apologize, it's actually really good. But if you're looking for higher end photography, the R5 is definitely gonna be the way to go. Also on the R5, you're able to record video in 8K. And I know I said that the EOS R5 isn't an 8K camera given the current circumstances that it overheats but I will say when it works and you can use it it's awesome in fact story time we just literally came from the zoo we were testing out the animal eye autofocus and given the fact that we had to be quite a distance away from the animals the 8K resolution really came in clutch because I was able to reframe my shot to get a more pleasing image compared to the R6 where Connor was forced to only use 4K and if we digitally zoom in you start to really lose detail. So on the R6 and the R5 we are getting an upgraded autofocus with dual pixel autofocus version 2. What you are seeing right now track me as I fumble my way towards the camera, which is awesome. Now, as Armando mentioned, we did test out animal eye tracking at the zoo and it worked great. It was able to lock on to multiple different animals and it was beautiful. We did run into one issue though, which I think is worth mentioning, although it is minor. When we were recording through chain link fences, which a lot of zoos have with enclosures, it is not able to figure out that there's an animal behind it. Even when I would switch it to manual focus and focus on the animal myself, and then switch it back to autofocus, it would immediately focus back on the fence, which is closer. So that is my guess is that it decides that's the subject because it's closer, even though it's not. That's a little bit annoying. They could probably fix that in time, and I would like to see that change. Now here's something interesting. When filming with both cameras in 4K, you would think that the R5 is going to give you 
better quality 4K, and technically it does using HQ mode, but in reality, that's not always going to work. In fact, we try to use HQ right now, and we were only able to get two shots because, well, the camera started to overheat. However, on the EOS R6, you're always gonna be able to get a downsampled 5.5K to 4K image in comparison to the R5, which in 4K non-HQ mode, you're actually getting, and Canon has not confirmed this, but it's either gonna be pixel binned or line skipped 4K in comparison to the HQ, which is gonna be the full sensor readout. So in regular 4K, I would actually prefer using the R6 in comparison to the R5. However, when we were shooting in 4K mode on the EOS R6, we ran into an unexpected problem, or at least unexpected to me. I was shooting the behind the scenes for the cinematic R5 test, and within, I would say honestly, half an hour, I was overheated on the EOS R6 shooting 4K IPB, which is a slightly more compressed codec than 4K all I, but it's also a slightly less quality codec than all I, so it was kind of confusing. And I was forced to shoot in 1080p, which is very disappointing. However, if you want to think of this as a positive, I was editing this 1080p footage upscaled to 8K on that first video that we did, and it didn't look too bad. I was actually genuinely shocked at how good it looked when upscaled to that extent. In fact, go back and check out that first cinematic test that we did with the EOS R5. Look at the behind the scenes and try to tell if you can see which ones were shot in 1080 and which ones were shot in 4K. I think it might be harder than you think. Now, one of the reasons I believe the R6 overheats sooner than the R5 is because it's always downsampling from that 5.5K sensor, as opposed to the R5, as I mentioned before, when you're not using the HQ mode, it's doing a combination of pixel binning, line skipping. We still don't officially know because Canon hasn't really said it, how it does its little secret magic sauce. Another thing that I believe, and this is just my opinion, that the R6 overheats sooner is because it is only using IPB. And IPB is a highly compressed codec, which means that the camera is processing this information a bit more in comparison to all eye which the R5 does so all eyes a little bit more relaxed it's not doing much compression but that's just a theory a film theory something else really awesome coming to the R5 and the R6 is actually eight stops of internal stabilization now this is coming through their RF mount system which is really awesome you are gonna be getting eight stops of stabilization with their kit lens and a select few other RF lenses. This is not with all RF lenses. An example of another one would be the 24 to 105 F4L series lens that I'm using right now. Now, as I'm filming this video, we are using auto ISO, something I don't personally use very often, but it is really cool because I'm able to do this now in C-Log, which is something new with the R5 and the R6. Previously, you could not do auto ISO in C-Log. Also, we are getting C-Log, which is really awesome. We did get it in the EOS R, so we expected it with the R5 and the R6, but I'm glad they included it in both cameras and didn't exclude it from the R6 and crippled this camera. Much appreciated. Here's the thing, these cameras are so confusing because on one side you have the R5 with these beautiful high quality modes that tend to overheat and then you're forced to shoot in regular 4K. But then when you shoot in regular 4K, the R6 is technically better because of the 5.5K downsampled sensor that it's doing every single time. But then it overheats and now you're forced to shoot in 1080p on the R6, which means now you're back to the R5 because it doesn't overheat in 4K all lie non-HQ. Whew, you see what I mean? It's like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I gotta say, like I said in my last video, if Canon can just fix these overheating problems, I truly believe they have these amazing cameras that will last for years to come. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We do have more R5 and R6 content coming soon. We also got the Sony A7S III. So make sure you guys turn on notifications so you guys don't miss out on that video. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.